So this is for my fellow photographers who are curious about how I went from a casual street photography project to uh, a beautiful little book and a solo exhibition. So my name is Gary Williams, and I'm actually pretty relatively new to this. I only started taking photographs professionally in January of 2023. Uh, I spent most of my life working as a singer in the music industry, and I, I just got to a stage where I was tired of traveling and being away all the time, and I decided I wanted to spend a bit less time on the road and more time working on my other lifelong passion of photography. So I started with a small studio, actually my home. I was developing a some nice little business doing headshots and a little bit of product photography. And then I eventually got into wedding photography, which I absolutely love. But let's just go back a little bit to January 2020, just before the pandemic hit. Now, a friend of mine messaged me to say that the great Martin Parr was doing a very rare workshop in India. I don't think he really does workshops. And we decided to go for it. And I'd always been a huge fan of his. And I mean, just to spend a few hours in his company would have been amazing, let alone a whole week studying and learning under his direction. And he was actually on that workshop that the seeds of this project were sown. I was really enjoying photographing shopkeepers over there. And I, I thought it was really interesting to see a person, you know, sort of in their environment, often surrounded by the, obviously their business stuff, but in many cases, there were things that represented their whole lives. So when I came back to London after that course and things started to open up after the pandemic, you might remember happened, I continued photographing shopkeepers just sort of on the high street close to my home here in Islington. And eventually, I sort of walked my way down this high street to another little street, a special street called Camden Passage. It's not actually in Camden. It's close to Angel Tube. Now, Camden Passage is a small, quite historical street. It, it's full of mostly independent shops and market traders a few days a week. It's a very charming place. And that's where I ended up spending most of my spare time for the next four years. And in the end, uh, I'd taken about five and a half, well over actually, five and a half thousand pictures down there. And there was never a master plan to turn this into a book or even an exhibition. Again, it was Martin Parr that came into the picture as he was hosting a one-day workshop at his foundation in Bristol on bookmaking by Adrian Tyler. This is one of his books. I, 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 he's a great um, photographer and I think an even better book editor. And this is one of the books all about smoke that I'd had for some time. So I, I knew it was going to be an interesting day. Now, Adrian was keen that we all took something tangible away from this short one-day workshop, and he encouraged us to bring along some six by four prints of some of the work that we'd done. So I got a little bit carried away. I printed off like about 120 <laughs> six by four prints, but I selected just about 30 of my favorites. And with Adrian's guiding hand, started to think about sequencing. And at the end of the day, had this little maquette. And this was really important. It's sort of coming to pieces. It was all sort of stuck together. It was really important to me because it was the first time that I felt that this could actually be something, a tangible thing. You know, seeing the photos in a sort of a book, crude book form like this, being able to flip the pages and take the images sort of to the next level with some well thought out sequencing was a really special moment for me. And it was the first time that I thought this could actually be more than just an Instagram account. So then I started studying everything I could about sequencing. And you know, I was going back to all my photo books and sort of studying not only the photos, but the way that they were sequenced and the way that they were put together and how in that they told a story. There's a great Magnum video course by Alex Soth all about this, and I found that super helpful. And as it happened, I, I, <laughs> I had the whole house to myself for a couple of weeks, so I spread all 126 by fours all over the living room floor, and I spent that time just playing around with the order. And it was actually really exciting to see how, you know, you could pair certain photos together so that one and one equals three. You know, the, 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 the sum of it was sort of greater than the parts. For example, I love this. Let me see if I can find this. I love, there's a pairing here, by, which is of uh, a lady called Juliet um, next to this little display of this paraphernalia on a market stall with this lady here. She's called Juliet eating an ice cream. And these photos have been laid out for days in front of me until I saw that pairing, you know, could, could make something special. That was really exciting for me. 
So from there, I eventually put a draft book together. Now I got it printed, it is this one actually, I got it printed at Mixum, it was about 30 quid. I think it's incredible how cheaply, relatively, we can print out a single book. But I kept playing around with the sequencing and I made a few books like these. So then I booked myself on as many <laughs> portfolio reviews as I could. I don't know if you're familiar with the format annual uh, portfolio review. I guess it's like the format festival. I booked myself on, I think it was about eight or 10 portfolio reviews with sort of renowned photographers and gallery directors and book editors. And I, I showed them all you know, where I got so far with the project and asked them obviously for their help and for their guidance. And the main thing that I found from all of these portfolio reviews is that it was, it was just so subjective. You know, I mean, I'd have one reviewer tell me that you absolutely don't use that photograph. And then the next one would say, oh, you absolutely need to keep that photograph in. I had some people tell me categorically that the sequencing was great in certain parts. And then, you know, the next reviewer would tell me it didn't really work and I needed to spend more time on that. And it was a bit confusing, a little bit disappointing, but there was still plenty of stuff that I took away from it, especially actually just making connections, which proved to be useful later on as the, as the project came to, you know, came to an end, came to fruition. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the term kill your darlings. It's often used for artists who are at the editing phase, you know, and it's difficult to get rid of things that we love and that we've grown attached to, whether it's sort of sections from a novel or things we've recorded for an album or indeed photos selected for a book. And for me, this is one of the hardest parts of this project because there were so many photos that I absolutely loved, but I knew I had to cut some of them. And this was made more difficult by the fact that many of the people that I'd photographed had become friends, you know, and they'd been super helpful. I mean, really pivotally, pivotally helpful in making this project happen. And, and I felt that I'd be really letting them down if I didn't include their photos in this project. But I also knew that I had to prioritize the book as a whole and not let my personal feelings for these photographs or these people get in the way. And I have to say, this did come back to bite me in the arse a bit, because some of the people that I didn't include in the book were really a bit pissed off that I hadn't and they couldn't, they just didn't really get it, you know, and that made me feel really bad. I just think people just didn't really understand the rationale for not including a photo when it was clearly a nice photo. They didn't really understand the sequencing and whatever. They just thought it was a nice photo. Just why don't you include it? You know, aren't we friends? So I had to stress to them, you know, that the book wasn't a directory of everybody in Camden Passage. It was just a little taste, you know, of, just to give people a little flavor of what the place was like. And I think hopefully they understood in the end. Anyway, I finally got to the stage where I was pretty happy with the photos uh, and the sequencing, but I needed some work on the design. So again, I reached out to various people for advice, but yeah, I needed, I knew I needed some professional help and this was a self-funded project. I didn't have the money to spend thousands of pounds just handing it over to a professional book editor. I wanted to work with somebody. And I was very grateful to come across a fellow called Matt Martin at the Photo Book Cafe in London, which is actually not too far from where I live. And Matt was an absolute godsend. Now, we agreed a reasonable fee and I sat with him on quite a few occasions. We just talked about the book and, you know, to get some ideas on editing and design. It was really because of him that we decided to base our initial ideas on some of the Hoxton Mini Press publications. You know, the, the, we end, went for a similar size, both in terms of physical dimensions and the number of pages, but his best idea was a, a cover for the book. So until this point, I'd planned to use one of the photos like this as, as the cover, but it was Matt's brilliant idea to not do that, to have just use some bold text on the cover. We made a couple of more sort of maquettes and it was sort of looking something like this. And this was a, you know, a new sort of draft copy that Matt printed out in, in his shop and he sort of bound for me. And again, it could feel, I was getting the feeling what this thing was going to be like. And then we decided to go for something with bolder colors like this. And we, started to consider the material that we'd be using and we decided to go and this is in fact the finished book so we went from this to this to this and this is a uh, cloth bound and it's got mm, i guess you call it foil block foil printing very bold like this um and i found this very 
exciting because it, it, it sort of feels like something. You know, it, it, it doesn't look like it's been made by Blurb or Mixum. And I have absolutely no offence to them because they do absolutely amazing work. And I, actually, I still use them both regularly for, for, for other projects. But yeah, this book, I, I, I wanted it to... to it look a little bit different. I think it feels like a proper book, if you know what I mean. And, and, and of course, then I had to get an ISBN code so that it could be properly registered and, and scanned uh, with the shops. But then we turned to uh, printing the actual book, and it was Matt who recommended a company called XYZ. They're a UK-based company. I found them to be an absolute joy to work with. They really cared about what they were doing, which is so important, isn't it? And it was just reassuring to me to have the benefit of their experience and their sort of watchful eye as this thing, you know, before it went to the actual uh, printers, before it went to actually to print, you know? So then we had to get down to the business of actually selling it. And I did a launch party, one of the cafes in Camden Passage, and I was so happy to see how well attended this was, because you know what it's like these days, everyone's just so busy. It's always difficult to get anybody to show up for anything, even if you're bribing them with free wine. <laughs> but you know, this was essentially a community project, and lots of people came along to really celebrate the, the end of this project and the launch of the book, and it was so gratifying. It was a really lovely night, it was a wonderful evening. And as far as actually selling the thing is concerned, well, there are now, I think, four stockists of the book in and around Camden Passage, and it's actually selling very well. Also, the Photo Book Cafe, they provide a wonderful service where they sell your book for you through their website, and they only take a very small commission. So I deal with the fulfillment, they take the payment and deal with all that, and the system works really well. You know, nobody gets rich from selling photo books. And the Photo Book Cafe, they understand that. They're on our side and they make everything really reasonably priced for us photographers to make a project like this work. Now, we only printed 150 copies of this book, so not very many. It's almost sold out. And I'm thrilled to tell you that I've now decided probably that I'm going to do a, another print run. I, I mean, I had to think, do I, do I, I'm just going to leave it at that or do I, get, you know, just start focusing on another project or do I do a bigger print run? And a few people said to me that if I do that, I should think about getting them printed in China with a much bigger print run, maybe a thousand. You know, the initial run, only 150. It's quite expensive per unit. So I actually have to sell all 150 just to break even on the book. I think this book is something that does have uh, a long lifespan. I think it's something that people, tourists and stuff, will buy at Christmas time. So that's what I've got to think about now. Am I going to spend some more money and think about that next stage, you know, of getting a, a whole bunch of them printed? At the same time when all of this was going on, I reached out to a local business organization, a bit like a chamber of commerce. I was doing some photography work for them. I showed them the project. They really liked it. And it was actually their idea to put together an outdoor exhibition of the work. So they liaised with the NatWest Bank to get permission to display the work on one of their buildings. And it actually came together very quickly. And it, I have to say, it was really quite a thrilling moment to see the, the posters go up and people, you know, looking at and enjoying the work. There was a real buzz in the local community. It was, I mean, as a photographer, of course, it was just a lovely thing to see. And that's just about that. I know I've been talking quickly. I've been trying to get through as much of this as I can for you in a short time. If you're in a similar position, you're working on a project and you're wondering what to do with the photos, hopefully this has been some use to you. It was never my intention that this was going to be a book or an exhibition. I think my focus was always just on the process, you know, the journey, if you like. I loved going down to Campton Passage and taking the pictures, meeting people. For me, it was a hugely beneficial project, both in terms of my personal journey as a photographer and what I learned, but also as a member of this community. You know, I've lived here for like over 20 years now, and I've never felt so connected to my community as I have now through this project. So I think if my intention was to make a book or get an exhibition, my heart wouldn't have been in the right place, you know, and, and I don't think I would have spent the endless hours that I did spend down there taking these photographs, right? I was, I think I was doing it for the right reasons, and I think that really helps. You have to love what you're doing, otherwise you just wouldn't bother, right? So anyway, if you've got any questions, there's anything that you can think of that I haven't included, just leave a comment, reach out to me however you like. You can go to my website, Gary Williams dot photography. You can find me on Instagram, Gary Williams dot photography. Um, if I can be of any help from 
anything that I've learned on this project, it would be my pleasure to help you.